Greetings. This video has a quick look at comparing some thunderstorm time lapses with some model simulations of the same day and location. Familiar to residents of Darwin, the thunderstorm in question, known as Hector, forms frequently over the Tiwi Islands off the North Australian coast. As the sun heats the island, thermals develop, forming clouds, and at the same time sea breezes develop along the coasts and blow inland until they hit each other. These sea breeze collisions force air upwards, often triggering thunderstorms in the process, as can be seen here. What you can see is a line of clouds propagating offshore to the north of the islands. This is a so-called outflow boundary, and it is caused by cool air in the lower atmosphere flowing out of from the earlier thunderstorm. This current of cool, dense air pushes air up at its front edge, and as the air is pushed up, it cools as it rises, until it condenses and forms the cloud that we can see. If we look at a simulation of the clouds for the 10th of November, we can see if it looks similar to the satellite loop. Simulated clouds develop as the island heats up and thunderstorms form at the eastern end of Melville Island before moving west and becoming widespread. Encouragingly, the simulation also produces a cloud line associated with the outflow boundary seen in the satellite. Looking at the simulated surface temperatures and winds shows the island heating up before areas of cold pools form under the raining thunderstorms. Towards the end, a huge cold pool forms and spreads out with a sharp boundary developing off the north coast associated with the cloud line. Now let's zoom in to where we made some time lapses of the Hector thunderstorm of 10th of November. To compare with the model, we also tilt the model to get the same view and again plot the clouds in three dimensions. After doing this, the mostly flat islands are no longer visible, but we can still see the clouds developing as it warms up during the day. As with the overhead view, clouds deepen first towards the east. Now bringing in the time lapse shows the thunderstorm maturing over eastern Melville Island. Given that the model is run at 1 km resolution in the horizontal with 60 vertical levels, the simulated clouds are noticeably smoother than the actual clouds. As the thunderstorm hits the stable lid at the bottom of the stratosphere at about 15 km altitude, the flat anvil top spreads out. The cloud movements at different levels are similar as they are pushed by winds that vary with altitude. Another suitable case occurred on 27th of October 2016. The winds at different altitudes varied less, leading to a more vertically stacked thunderstorm, while the 10th of November case had strong westerly winds at the top of the thunderstorm that forced the anvil cloud off to the east. In this case, the winds at high altitudes are weaker, and so the anvil spreads out towards both the east and west, as well as towards the camera. I'll be looking at more Hector cases soon, as well as New Zealand mountain cloud time lapses and simulation comparisons, so hope to catch you then, and thanks for watching.